This is the first of three demos covering the new direct modeling functionality. And if we click the image in that portion of the rolling demo, it will load this model. And the first stage of the demonstration is to just recap on some of the features that we saw at the SPM. So things such as drafting, scaling, rotating of features, moving faces. We'll then progress onto the latest of direct modeling features, some on this model and some on the other three. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at scaling and rotating this slot. And so that we can see the original size, I'm just going to sketch some wireframe around the top of that slot. I can then use that wireframe to position a work plane and grab hold of the work plane and align it to this face. Once we've done that, we can just rotate the slot around and then I'm just going to select all of those internal faces, go into our direct edits, and scale them by 0.75. Once we've scaled the slot, we can then look at rotating it so that it runs parallel with the surrounding features. So I can go into the rotate function, rotate by 35 degrees, and then hit the tick to accept. So if I just deselect everything, we can see the wireframe that represents the original size and position of the slot and we can see how we have altered that slot. I'll just return to the world origin. Next we're going to look at the dividing of a face and the moving of a face. So we're going to concentrate on this top face of the solid. Now we have some pre-created wireframe on level 5 that I can just turn on. And then using the divide face feature I can come in and select both of those pieces of wireframe and then apply that and it should split the face of the solid based on those pieces of wireframe. So now when I select it we can see the inner and the outer ring are no longer selected. With that region selected I can turn off the curves, go into the move function and lower that inner face by 5 millimeters hit the green tick and it will apply the changes and you can see the effect that that has had on our model. Next, during the SPM we saw quite a complex drafting example on all of these ribs along here. So you can see there's lots of areas where they're going to have to re-intersect and re-trim these surfaces. So I'm just going to show you how we did that and the first thing we need is a work plane correctly aligned to this orientation. So I can position, position a work plane with the Z in this direction and then we're going to sketch some simple wireframe along the top edge. So using the intelligent cursor we can snap to a key point and again just bringing the wireframe all the way down the top of the rib. Just undo that point snap to that one and then snap onto that end point. Once we have that wireframe we can blank the solid, convert it to a composite curve and then use that composite curve to generate an extrusion surface. So probably just wanted about 10 or 11 millimeters long. Next we can select all of the faces we want to draft so I'm going to work my way around the model, selecting the faces of the rib. And once we move around to the back side of the model, or back side of the rib, just selecting those faces. And we're going to look at another new feature, and that is we've just selected all of those faces. It can be quite time consuming when you're doing this if we were to make a wrong selection we instantly lose all of the faces we've just selected so it can be quite frustrating we have a new button here which is restore, restore previous selection so I can hit that and it instantly restores whatever we had selected last after doing that I can just go in and add the final rib into the selection so with all the faces selected I can go into the drafting form and I just want two degrees of draft there 
and the reference entity is going to be a surface. So I'm going to pick the surface and once it's taken the surface into selection I'm then going to apply that draft to that area of the model. So at the moment it's just going in to give us a blue or ghosted image of what the draft will look like. So we can see here the orange surface is selected, the original surface, and the blue ghosted outline of what the modified surface is going to look like. And if we get this blue outline, we know that the draft is, or power shape is capable of achieving that draft. So I could just apply that. Whilst we're waiting for it to apply, we should point out that the draft is actually referencing a varying Z height. So when draft was initially implemented, we could only reference off one surface. And in this case, it wouldn't give us a good result because the draft down here would still be referencing the top of this surface. But now, by using the surface as the reference entity, we're able to have a varying Z height reference point. Just delete the surface. And before we move on, I'll just take a dynamic cross section through the model so we can see the effect that that has had. So if we just come from the front, then we can see how we've drafted that rib. So the next thing I'm going to show you, we saw a new selection feature, which was Restore Selection. We also have more intelligent box selection. So if I pick a face of the solid and then box select, it will select any faces wholly enclosed within the box that I select problem that we have or had was that if you had faces behind the box it would also pick those up. So we've just improved the intelligence of this. So if I box select along this bottom feature it selects all of the faces of the feature but doesn't select any of the faces behind it that may have also been within the box selection. The final new feature we're going to look at on this model is some of the additions to the moving of features. So if I just look from the top with this work plane active and we can see several features around this rib. So I'm going to select all of the surfaces of that feature and then I want to move the feature so I'm going to move. The problem is I want to move it along the direction of its own rib. So I want to move it parallel to this rib or in line with it. Now coming up with the XYZ coordinates of that move would actually be quite difficult. So we have two new features for defining the move vector. One is actually defining a vector between two points. So I can go into the two points, select two points along that rib and then the move that I apply is going to be running along the vector of that rib or normal to that rib. So I'm just going to use the intelligent cursor to drag that out by five millimeters, let that go and it should extend these surfaces, retrim all of the surrounding surfaces and so on. Hit the green tick to just accept and apply those changes. We can just cancel that form and take a look at the changes that we've made to the model. So it'll be very difficult to define that position using simply X, Y, Z coordinates. Now the other option that we have for moving entities, again, if we look at the bottom of the model, we have these rib type features and they are sitting sort of perpendicular to the curvature of this face. So again we want to move one of these, so I'll just select all of those features, but we want to move them perpendicular to this flat plane. So I can go into the move function again, and this time we're going to say define the movement direction using the normal of the surface. So I can pick on that surface to give us the normal of the underlying surface, and then I can take hold of it and just move it over by a couple of millimeters. 
When I'm happy with that, I can press the green tick to apply those changes. And again, it's a move that would have been quite difficult to define using simply x, y, z coordinates. And that concludes the first part of our direct modelling demonstration.